Deport first, appeal later. If you follow immigration law or human rights update, you would have heard of the term deport first, appeal later. This was introduced fairly recently in 2014 and is particularly important in deportation cases. The idea, the idea is uh, deporting an offender from the UK without hearing his or her appeal and then when he's out of the country he can still appeal it. Does this offend against Article 6 uh, which is uh, the right to a fair trial or even against Article 8, right to a family and private life? Let's find out. This is Karisha Meitaram Turner, your human rights barrister on Karisha Law. Deport first, appeal later. Now this brings um, a, a lot of issues uh, and, and sentiments both positive or not so positive. After all, we are talking about criminals who also happen to be in breach of immigration rules, of the immigration rules. Whilst um, there is a little, if any, uh, sympathy for convicted foreign criminals, the fact is that Parliament has given them the right of appeal against their deportation order. Um, in the case of uh, Kyrie against the Secretary of State, State some time back, the Supreme Court looked at the lawfulness of what deport first and appeal later provision of the Immigration, Nationality and Asylum Act 2002 said. The Supreme Court found that this power was incompatible with the procedural requirement, and this is important, of Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights, which protects the rights of an individual's uh, private and family life. I have clients who come to see me after they've received a deportation order citing part or partly citing um, the case of Kyrie and Bind Laws. I always um, remind my clients that the Supreme Court did not find that all out-of-country appeals would necessarily be unlawful. It was more to do um, with uh, securing legal representations, finding a lawyer who could represent you in the United Kingdom and who is also familiar with immigration rights. Uh, but also the case was, was broader than that. It also looked at the rights of, a, of the children involved and so on and so forth. But it's, it, it's, it's worth remembering that pursuant to Section 32 of the UK Borders Act 2007, the Home Office must make a deportation order in respect of a foreign criminal that is not a British national and has been convicted for, for a defence which, for which he was sentenced for, to a period of imprisonment of at least 12 months. So, the Secretary of State does not have a discretion on this. Um, earlier this month, the court revisited the provisions, or the, the, this provision, in the case of Juba, um, and that's the latest judgment on, on this following um, um, dealing with deport first and appeal later policy after um, the famous case of Kyrene Bain loss. Now, in Juba, the court found that it was acceptable for the first year tribunal to hear an appeal from abroad after the person has been deported and then to decide whether the person has been deprived of the ability to secure a lawyer or to give instructions or, or prepare his evidence and to see if there are any breaches of Article 8. It is interesting to see that the court um, said it is only during the hearing or after the hearing that the question of legal representation can be answered. Um, so, for example, if some evidences are not available and it's apparent during the hearing that it's not available, uh, or some questions cannot be properly answered during the hearing due uh, to the appellant being uh, not only being abroad, uh, but also not being able to speak to his lawyer from abroad, and um, that's only when that's only then that it, it becomes apparent that there is a gap, and um, that is when the court will decide whether an out of country appeal is suitable or not. 
I am sure you'll agree with me this raises more questions than it answers, which is why it's important to seek a specialist or a specialist lawyer the moment you receive a deportation order. Um, out of the 1,000 cases, um, or deportation order cases, only 72 individuals uh, attempted to pursue uh, an appeal from abroad. None succeeded. Access uh, to counsel or lawyer is important. In essence, um, if you have a deportation order made against you as a result of a prison sentence of a year or more, but less than four years, and you have a genuine and subsisting relationship with a partner in the UK who is, for example, a British national or settled in the UK, and you have children, you may be able to challenge um, the, the, the order. Um, so it's important to speak to a lawyer uh, about this. Um, in some cases, um, um, deportation uh, can also be challenged uh, under the Refugee Convention or the Trafficking uh, Convention. I am not uh, covering all the rules on deportation, but for public interest or public benefit, are considered during the deportation process. So, so there's a lot more to say, but, but it's important you know, to, to highlight these. Also, uh, good to know, there are fundamental rights of a person being de deported. For example, the state cannot subject any individual to torture, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. So sending somebody back to a place where he will be tortured, where there's evidence that he will be tortured or subject to inhuman treatment is unlawful. A deportation order is not to be taken lightly. Uh, we now have the benefit of technology and cases um, are being heard online uh, since um, for, for a while now, since the beginning of the pandemic. Remember uh, the provisions of uh, deport first and appeal later is not in itself unlawful. Important and very important to, to, to note this. I hope um, you have found this video helpful. Uh, thank you for watching Parisha Law and if you do have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you.